afternoon. Welcome to this third European Virtual Roundtable on Simiox Therapy. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Laurent Morin, Medical Affairs Director of PhysioAssist. And as you know, mucus stasis ultimately leads to airway plugging, chronic bacterial infection, inflammation, and airway tissue damage, and bronchiectasis. Patients should benefit from long-term optimal airway clearance, and not only during hospitalization. For these reasons, efficient home care solutions like Simiox therapy are required to stop the deleterious impact of mucus stasis in airways. This is our last topic uh, to be discussed today. Aim of these roundtables, and this is the last today, are to share best practice on Simiox therapy for each step of CF management. I will be responsible for hosting this presentation today, and I'm glad to welcome the speakers who will talk about observations of medical teams in patients using, using Simiox in their home rehabilitation, personalized medicine. So let me introduce the speakers now. Dr. Bobu Kamara, pulmonologist from the CF Center of University Hospital of Grenoble in France. Dr. Kamara will moderate the first part of the session with me. Dr. Justina Milczewska, pediatrician and pediatric pulmonologist, and Natalia Generalska, respiratory physiotherapist from the CF department of the Institute of Mother and Shield near Varso in Poland. Dr. George Gross Onbrick, pediatric pulmonologist, and Mrs. Christina Kramer, respiratory therapist from the CF Center of University Hospital in Münster, Germany. After the presentations of case rep the two first case reports, uh, the speakers will answer questions from the audience. So I invite all the audience to ask questions to the panelists in the Q&A icon on your screen. Don't hesit hesitate to ask questions. This is very important for the discussion. And now, as our first uh, speaker, Dr. Camara, will present the study design of the French Multicenter Home Care Simiox trial and the first case report today. So Dr. Kamara, it's your turn to start. You can share your screen now. Perfect. Okay, so I'm uh, Dr. Kamara from uh, Grenoble Adult Fibrosis uh, Center. I work with uh, my colleague, Rebecca Mitfar. Uh, she can't, um, she is not uh, here today. Uh, I'm pleased to present this study on care Simerks, of which I am one of the principal investigators. So we will talk about uh, study design and the uh, case report phase of uh, one of our patients. Uh, home care simiox is a clinical trial. You can see the number of identification here. Uh, in overall, it's about efficacy and acceptability of simiox used in autonomy and at home for our waste clients for adults, um, for patients with cystic fibrosis. The primary objectives are evolution of respiratory symptoms and decline in respiratory function. It's a prospective randomized controlled multicenter adaptive trial. The, for the control group, it's the usual care for chest physiotherapy without smirx. We did in this study an article, sequential and ancillary analysis. We will talk about this study, uh, this study uh, after. The duration of treatment is uh, three months. So, um, regarding the primary and point, it's the change in respiratory score of CFQR at two months adjusted for respiratory score of CFQR at infusion. The change in FEV1 at three months adjusted for FEV1 at infusion. About the secondary and point, as you can see, we have uh, a lot of uh, endpoints. First, quality of life, CFQR, safety of use of the device, satisfaction of patients, the impact on lung functions, overall quality of life. We have also sleep quality, the fatigue after physiotherapy session, the use of antibiotherapy, time to the first exacerbation, and the feasibility of remote monitoring is very interesting in this uh, context of uh, pandemic of COVID-19. About inclusion criteria, the patient with diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, the disease stability defined as a delay of at least four weeks 
since the end of exacerbation. The patient uh, may have uh, an age over 14 uh, in uh, all the year, requiring at least one airway clearance session by week, and the patient able to read and to understand and to express constant for the steady protocol. Exclusion criteria are common sense, like uh, pneumothorax or um, severe emphysis, patient on long term front waiting list. Any contraindication to an instrumental bronchial clearance technique. Patient already own to use Simerox at home. Patient not available. The patient currently participating or having participated within one month prior to inclusion in another clinical uh, investigation. And also uh, pregnant women, uh, bacterial women, and uh, other. Uh, and other. In this stage, you can see the steady design. We have, uh, as you can see, four visits. Inclusion visit at this visit, we verify the inclusion criteria, information, uh, constant collection, randomization, one by one, and if necessary, sputum or beta CA uh, for some patients. We have so uh, two groups. The control group is the usual treatment without CMEOX and the CMEOX group. For CMEOX group, we use uh, we do an education in use uh, by the device, the device by physio expert. It is five visits uh, or teleconsultation in two or uh, in one or two weeks. We have the possibility to set up CMEX and train patients to avoid the hospital uh, visit. Uh, during the study, we collect uh, the adverse events or severe adverse events. At the last visit, Three months, uh, we, we have the FDR, pulmonary function test, actimetry, uh, curve conception, claim to exacerbation, etc. Only for CMEX group, we have the satisfaction of patient and the use acceptability uh, of patient for the device. Uh, for, uh, about the ancillary home care CMEX, uh, uh, the goal is the effect of CMEX used in autonomy at home in pulmonary static hyperinflation. We uh, study two criteria. Uh, the first is change in residual volume at three months, and the second is similar advance and use of therapy at uh, three months. About the uh, sample size, we plan to include the first um, 56 patients randomized in the main trial. In this uh, graph, in this slide, you can see uh, here the rate of inclusion uh, in ancillary study. In the green curve, you have the planned uh, number of planned inclusion and the second curve is the number of inclusion achieved. Uh, here in this graph, you can see the rate of inclusion by center in France. The first center is Grenoble uh, Center. We have uh, um, 26 patients between adult and uh, pediatric center. After Montpellier, 14 patients, 11 patients in Nice and five patients in Marseille. We plan to have the result of ancillary study uh, in uh, July 2021. So about the case report, regarding this case report, it's about a 39 years old man who present recurrent infection and uh, infertility. In uh, 2016, the patient present, presented allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. And in uh, 2017, the first infection by pseudomonas aeruginosa. The diagnosis of cystic fibrosis was made at uh, uh, 37 years old. The genotype is not classical, G85E and G1152H. Uh, the patient present also colonization by pseudomonas, uh, by aspergillus femigitis and staphylococcus aureus. He did um, two physiotherapy sessions by week and he complains of dyspnea and bronchial congestion. Here in this uh, uh, graph, you can see the evolution of uh, lung uh, function, respiratory function. In blue curve, you have uh, lung capacity. In uh, uh, orange, we have FE1. And in pink curve, you can see here the residual volume curve. CMEX therapy was uh, uh, made uh, since March 2000. Uh, 2020, you can see the decline of uh, residual volume as we expected. 
an increase of lung capacity and FU1. We have the same results in this uh, graph. Here, lung capacity and FU1, and uh, down here, the residual volume will decrease uh, after use of uh, uh, similar graph. So, over the same year, we have uh, improvement of the score. We have no change in this similar score, and uh, the same for quality of life. Uh, regarding the, the satisfaction questionnaire, uh, the result is very good for global satisfaction, but uh, 83 for effectiveness and easiness. The fatigue score is very low, uh, but if we uh, see the optimetry, we have an improved sleep fragmentation, decreased physical activity for patient, but maybe uh, because of change of season of, or of the, the weather. So uh, our first impression, current impression, our, uh, the study is uh, going well. In general, we have, uh, in adult cancer, we have uh, 23 patients randomized in the trial, uh, and uh, 12 patients with uh, similar therapy. The education and delivery of material uh, go well. We have at least uh, one hour. We have no difficulty in use of uh, the device. The general feeling of impression respiratory function, least efforts for bronchial clearance, more efficient for bronchial damage. The only um, negative point is the device physical size for patients who want to know. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Kamara, for this uh, very interesting study design uh, and case report. And now, um, Dr. Michelska uh, will present the second case report. So Dr. Michelska, you can share your screen now. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I would like me and um, our physiotherapist, Natalia Jemerowska, we would like to present um, a case of a boy who uh, had very serious pulmonary exacerbation requiring hospitalization and uh, he recovered very nicely thanks to using uh, CMOX uh, at home after, after this uh, serious pulmonary exacerbation. Uh, it is a 16-year-old um, male um, with cystic fibrosis. Um, the patient generally has mild bronchopulmonary disease, and in stable um, period, his FEV1 is about 100% projected. Uh, the patient had um, a first-time bronchodilia gladioli infection in March 2018. Um, but luckily, um, we eradicated it, and it was a successful eradication. Uh, he also has uh, intermittent Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection, but less positive culture was in August 2019, but he's still on uh, cholestine, uh, on inhaled uh, cholestine. And uh, he also had quite serious um, Clostridium difficile colitis in 2018. The patient also has um, uh, quite serious problems with his uh, sinuses. Uh, he had two um, endoscopic surgeries in, two, in 2017 and 2019, and uh, suffers from diabetes uh, since 2019, but luckily, um, for now, he doesn't require insulin, he's on dietary um, treatment. He also suffers from liver fibrosis, and on the next one, totally independently of cystic fibrosis, he also um, has an anomaly, a buccal spit aortic valve. And uh, this is his uh, medical history. Um, he had this serious pulmonary exacerbation in July 2020, but his last visit before this exacerbation was uh, in January. So it was six months earlier. Uh, at the time he was stable uh, without any features of the pulmonary exacerbation. And as you can see, his uh, spirometry parameters were, well, were 
very nice. Uh, and then there, there was a COVID-19 pandemic uh, started uh, and the next visit uh, was planned in April. However, the patient's parents canceled uh, it due to a pandemic and we didn't hear from them until July. They didn't ask us for new uh, visit date uh, until this um, exacerbation that I will talk about in a minute. But I also have to tell you that um, it's a typical teenager. Um, he's a rebellious uh, teenager, um, at least he used to be at the time. And um, during to that pause in visits in our center, during the pandemic pro problems in his family also, uh, he almost um, completely abandoned his uh, physiotherapy procedures. So he developed this uh, exacerbation by the end of June. Um, there was um, uh, ambulatory ambulatory treatment. And um, the patient was urgently admitted to our uh, department. He was in moderate condition with wheezing, with intensive productive cough, with saturation drops uh, to 88%. Uh, it was for the first time um, in this patient with saturation drops. Also, tachypnea uh, and tachycardia. Uh, in the X-ray examination, there were there were um, several changes, such as in interstitial uh, changes, um, peripheral dysfunction, and show you in a minute. Um, but I would like to um, emphasize that the drop in spirometry parameters was huge. It was a 40% drop in um, FUD wire. So it was a very, very serious exacerbation. As you can see, here you can see instant interstitial uh, changes and also thickening of the frontal walls. Uh, so we started three, three week uh, hospitalization. He was treated with intravenous cefepime and amikacin. Uh, Salbutamol that he received an um, early year was changed to formoterol. We added a second um, donase alpha inhalation uh, in the morning. During first three days, um, due to those uh, saturation drops, he required uh, oxygen therapy. And um, during uh, the stay, we received the results fungal culture and there was massive growth of Aspergillus fumigatus. So uh, he received um, uh, itraconazole uh, and amphotericin B. And uh, we started to use CMAX uh, in this patient. Um, in the second half of the hospitalization, because uh, simply the device was not available, it was occupied by other patients um, during the first um, half of the stay, uh, but fortunately we could start it. Uh, and we achieved the improvement in um, general condition, in osculatory changes, in x-ray examination, and also improvement if in spirometry parameters. However, it was only a slight um, improvement. And then after the Discharge, we recommended to continue physiotherapy with CMOX at home. Luckily, the patient could, uh, was um, his parents exactly able to get this device. And now, Natalia will tell you. Um, uh, during hospitalization, uh, on the first uh, part with uh, CMOX, uh, first we um, uh, we, we first uh, first part of hospitalization we didn't we didn't have uh, CMOX uh, and uh, and the second part we used CMOX and how it looks his physiotherapy for motor inhalation twice a day um, inhalation with um, 
5% uh, um, salt twice a day, donor alpha inhalation twice a day, and amphotericin B uh, once a day. So a lot of um, nebulization. Um, bronchial uh, drainage using CIMOX twice a day. Uh, and um, drainage not using um, PEP and oscillation PEP uh, once a day, and physical activity uh, outdoor gym uh, in our hospital. Uh, uh, when we start working with CIMOX, it was first time for this patient. So we must uh, choose the correct position and uh, work uh, with uh, and um, learn how to. Uh, uh, um, used CIMOX and uh, we must uh, uh, choose correct position and uh, open glottis and uh, how to uh, using CIMOX all the time. We learning how to perform drainage uh, properly using CIMOX and we start with um, eight exhalation in series and six, eight uh, repetition. Um, and we use 25, uh, 50 and 70 uh, 75 uh, um, power of CMOX, and we use um, PEP, uh, uh, positive expiratory pressure, um, between uh, CMOX series. Uh, and the, um, all day, uh, day, day physiotherapy uh, looks uh, like, uh, like here. Uh, it was morning, uh, morning physiotherapy, it was hormoteral inhalation. And then we wait 15, 20 minutes and uh, we made a nebulization with hypertonic salt. And then we are using CMOX for drainage and we use uh, uh, PEP uh, uh, between a CMOX series. Then uh, it was uh, amphoterin CB nebulization and after one hour, Dornas alpha nebulization. Afternoon, uh, physical activity with physiotherapist, um, drainage with uh, CMOX uh, and PEP and nebulization with Dornas Alpha. Last, uh, last one, last, uh, last uh, drainage, uh, evening drainage, it was uh, without um, uh, physiotherapist. Uh, he made this drainage by himself. And it was um, their uh, formal inhalation, uh, salt, uh, hypertonic salt nebulization. And then he made um, his bronchial drainage using PEP and oscillation PEP. And uh, when uh, he finished hospitalization and when he go home, we changed a little bit um, his physiotherapy uh, because we, he's got only formal inhalation twice a day. Uh, nebulization with hypertonic salt uh, twice a day, but Dornaza Alpha, it was only one day uh, in the afternoon uh, drainage. And, but he's got amphoterin, amphoterin C, uh, B um, uh, nebulization at colistin. So it was a lot of uh, nebulization. Uh, drainage with CMOX, it was twice a day. And uh, once, uh, Drainage with uh, PEP and oscillation PEP. Uh, and uh, in, uh, host, in, in a home, host, uh, home uh, physiotherapy, CMOX was uh, using uh, like here, sitting position with head uh, resting and open glottis, eight series, eight exhalation, and two first series 25%, with uh, five uh, series 50%, and last series 70%. Uh, Drainage with um, uh, PEP, it was uh, something about five, eight exhalation between CMOX, uh, CMOX series. Uh, we changed uh, shame of, uh, shame of a physiotherapy procedure at home uh, because we use CMOX uh, on the morning and on the evening uh, drainage, uh, but afternoon uh, he used um, uh, oscillation PEP and uh, 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 and uh, nebulization was uh, um, like like on uh, like you see colistin, uh, hypertonic salt, uh, and uh, on the afternoon it was uh, Dornaza Dornaza Alpha um, nebulization. So after uh, this discharge, uh, the, um, we set uh, two visits for this patient. After one month, 
from this discharge and after two months from discharge. On those both visits, uh, the patient was in good clinical condition without any features of pulmonary exacerbation, with no cough. Uh, and what was very um, joyful for us, um, we observed significant increase uh, in motivation to perform daily chest physiotherapy in this patient. He liked uh, physiotherapy with CMOX very much. And here you can see um, the parametry spirometers. As you can see, there was a very significant drop in FEV1, in FBC, and also in um, a maximum expiratory flow at 25% of FBC, it is MFE. MEF25 um, was really a significant drop. And he started using CMOX somewhere here. And uh, we observed the, the, the biggest uh, improvement was observed during uh, his stay at home when we uh, already um, finished his uh, exacerbation, exacerbation treatment and he started to use um, CMOX. This is, and this is after two months from discharge, uh, those um, results were very good. And I would uh, also like to uh, show you his lung clearance uh, index uh, before uh, before uh, pandemic in, in January it was around nine um, points, and then that increased up to more than thirteen, and then dropped, and at home it dropped to. Um, 8.9, so it was a very good result after two months of using CMOX uh, for this patient. And to conclude, uh, I would like to tell you that um, drainage uh, using CMOX uh, not only gives us good results in terms of um, respiratory function, um, of uh, pulmonary function tests, Etc. But also, uh, this is very important that uh, during uh, COVID-19 era, uh, the patient can use uh, this uh, device uh, independently without the need for the assistance of the physiotherapist, which is very, very important um, when the patients have to be isolated um, due to COVID-19 pandemic. And the second aspect uh, that we see very clearly, uh, thanks to this case, is um, that uh, when we have uh, some rebellious uh, teenagers, um, the possibility to offer a new um, method that um, gives good effect and patients see uh, those uh, good effects. Uh, really motivates uh, patients to systematic work. Uh, and here I would like to thank you very, very much for your attention and I'm looking for the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michewska and uh, Mrs. Ajnarska for this uh, very uh, interesting case report. Um, we, we have learned a lot uh, this, uh, this afternoon. So, now we start uh, the first part uh, of discussion. Um, Dr. Kama, any comments uh, from the, uh, the, the previous uh, presentation? I have just uh, one comment. comment. It's, um, first, it's a very good presentation. Thank you. Uh, I just um, have a question. Uh, in your case, the CMOX is used uh, in the southern part of uh, uh, evolution of patient in hospitalization. Do you think that the onset of exacerbation is uh, the good time to implement CMOX? Because uh, in this time, you have uh, uh, the fatigue of patient, you have uh, many information. It's just a question for general culture. Thank you. Thank you very much for this question and also for your presentation. Ah. Uh, very good. Uh, 
Um, I would like to say that during pulmonary exacerbation, uh, when this fatigue of um, um, respiratory muscles uh, um, might occur, and when the patient is um, ill, uh, feels bad, and um, doesn't have, he, um, he's tired, simply, and, uh, and is not able to perform um, exer exertions. Uh, it's, CMOX uh, gives the possibility of, um, dim of diminishing uh, this fatigue during um, drainage. So I think uh, that we, we have Experiences in using CMOX during pulmonary exacerbations because uh, in such uh, sick uh, patients, uh, it's uh, better to diminish this uh, fatigue during um, during the. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, but I think uh, in the the beginning of exacerbation, maybe the, the classical physiotherapy if, if uh, a professional can help and uh, we can use also the CMAX that is necessary for the, the beginning of the exacerbation to, to combine the two techniques, uh, CMAX and the, um, a classical physiotherapy. Uh, yes, we totally agree, uh, but we didn't have this possibility. Uh, it was a technical problem because we didn't have the device. Uh, but normally we start uh, we start uh, performing um, physiotherapy with CMOX uh, from the beginning of the exacerbation. Here, um, here there was wasn't it wasn't possible. We don't <laughs> we don't have to CMOX at, um, uh, on this time because another patient used this one and. Uh, we start with another drainage, uh, with uh, oscillation, with uh, autogenic drainage, and then when we've got uh, uh, CMOX, we start work with CMOX. But uh, we, uh, in all, uh, different patients, when we, we've got CMOX, we start first day work with CMOX. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, effectively, we, we see the now, due to the several uh, papers published uh, published recently, the benefits of pulmonary rehabilitation uh, in patients with chronic respiratory uh, disease. Um, in CF patients, uh, from your perspective, uh, uh, what could be the benefits uh, of uh, air recurrence, including in pulmonary rehabilitation? And have you seen any uh, impact of uh, air clearance device like CMOX uh, on physical activity uh, in these patients. Um, for um, okay, you can. Uh, I think that um, proper air clearance gives the possibility to. Um, improve pulmonary function tests, respiratory functions in general, and it's a, a good moment to start physical activity. And uh, also, in contrary, the, the physical activity uh, also gives better uh, lung function. So it's, uh, of course, it's, it's a very good uh, situation and it's very um, good for the patient. <laughs> okay, thanks. Dr. Kamal, you, you, you want to... No, yes, uh, I just uh, want to say that for uh, our patient, our impression um, as uh, the, um, the general feeling is uh, the improvement of uh, lung function and the, the, the least effort for bronchial um, um, drainage. Is uh, our first uh, impression and it's um, uh, for uh, the whole patient. We um, we see the the, the benefits of uh, long term air clearance uh, at home and not only during hospitalization. 
And so it's, uh, it's fundamental that uh, patients use uh, their, uh, their air recurrence device uh, at home. Um, so it's, it's, very, it's, it's a great challenge uh, to convince the patients to use uh, an additional device, a new technique uh, at home. Uh, the patients are uh, still uh, overburdened with uh, a lot of therapies. Uh, so how, uh, how uh, do you train uh, the patients and how do you convince the patients to accept uh, semiox therapy uh, for home care? What, what's your strategy to, uh, to, to convince the patients uh, to add a new uh, therapy uh, in their, um, among their, uh, their care management? As I said earlier, uh, sometimes the fact that it, it, this is new can be a big advantage because our teenager, teenagers are um, um, often bored and uh, tired. Um, so this, and when we say that it's a new device, um, innovative device, really it's a, it's a, it's a good um uh, reason for the patients, um, and uh, I think yeah, yeah. Most of patients uh, is they ask uh, physiotherapists, "Can we try? Can have have you got Simox? Because we would like to try Simox. It's something new that we would like to try." And when they see effect, very good effect. Uh, they uh, try to buy this and uh, uh, start work at home. Uh, but uh, if they can't and they came for the hospitalization, always we've got a uh, question, can we use Simox at hospital when we, when we will be? So um, for me, it's a um, very, very good um, method of drainage and the uh, patient, we work with children uh, and with teenagers uh, in our hospital. Um, and with most of our patients uh, like working with CIMOX and they would like to have CIMOX at home because they, they see they see um, how it's good and, uh, um, and the results. And the results, yes. Okay. Uh, of course, there are five or 10% that we have to persuade, but uh, we, we also always tell them try why not try listen to us we, 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 we will explain how to do it and at least try and most of them uh, start to accept in uh, in our experience in uh, grown up we don't have a um, problem to convince patient to use uh, simiox but the, the main problem is uh, to have the device without the protocol uh, but the patients are very uh, uh, adherent to, to the protocol, so we don't have the problem for, for to, to convince her, to convince them. Yes, the problem is to have the device. Okay. We um, we, we had a, we, we, so, uh, several clinical trials uh, uh, have been. Uh, uh, delayed, uh, so some are uh, had very uh, high difficulties uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic situation. Uh, and especially uh, in terms of recruitment of patients uh, in these trials. Uh, some, uh, a lot of uh, trials uh, have been postponed uh, until the situation uh, um, is better. Um, fortunately, uh, in the home care CF uh, trial, our recruitment was not so impacted uh, by, the, uh, by the pandemic situation uh, because it's a home care trial first. <laughs> and, uh, and secondly, uh, we, um, we, we had the opportunity to train the patients by uh, remote, uh, with remote uh, tools. Um, it was good for the patients to, to be trained remotely uh, and to, uh, to have a, a video conference, uh, especially with uh, respiratory therapists, uh, to, uh, to use uh, efficiently uh, the device. Uh, have you any experience on, uh, on remote uh, training uh, in, uh, in physiotherapy uh, with patients uh, um, 
outside the hospital. Have you any experience on that? I will, yeah. My question is, is uh, mainly for the German and the, and the Polish team. Uh, I've got uh, two patients with um, CMOX working and teammates with Grenash with CMOX and uh, the pandemic, uh, we uh, made a, se a session, a physiotherapy session uh, by uh, on online and uh, we try work together, uh, use computer. It's not so good like uh, I can work with patient face to face, but in pandemic, um, it's some way uh, how we can help our patient. Uh, so I've got two patients and we work together with CMOX uh, online. Okay, great, thanks. In Germany, have you, uh, have you any uh, experience uh, on that? Yes, we also have experience in uh, treating and um, a telephone or a video conference. But um, at first, we see the patients um, um, in the clinic to, to treat and to, to do the assessment here. And then we decide if it's um, enough to, to see them at the telephone or at video conference. Uh, I asked the German team if you can share your screen, uh, Christina. Uh, yes. It's your turn to, uh, to present your, your case report. Thank you. Thank you. OK, hello, everybody. Münster is a student city in the northwest of Germany. And Dr. Rosa Onebring and I are working here in the university hospital. I can't change the slide, so I'm sorry. I have to try again. <laughs> okay, now it works. So we mainly treat pediatric patients, e.g. with neuromuscular diseases, metabolic defects, PCD, CF, and so on. We don't have a transition, so adult CF patients are also part of our patient population. We work both as inpatients and in the pneumology outpatient clinic, and there we work interprofessional. We've been treating patients with CMEX since 2018, and we have test devices in our clinic, and the patient tested either during their inpatient stay, e.g. during the regular administration of antibiotics, during an acute infection or in the presentation of the pneumology department where we physiotherapists adjust the device with the patients and provide them with the best possible care. Before a prescription is issued by the doctor, the patients must have successfully completed at least three sessions minimum and must also be inadequately supplied with smaller hand devices, e.g. Flutter, Cornet, Aerobica, a cappella choice, and so on. Simex does not replace physiotherapy, I think, but it complements it perfectly. And um, I think um, the team before um, agrees. So 21 of our patients have this device at home and use it regularly every day for their volunteer drainage. As a part of my thesis to become as a respiratory therapist, I made a small comparison with patients who used a high frequency chest ball oscillation vest and Simiox. And nine of 10 benefited more from Simiox than from the uh, use of vest. Another experience is um, that in a patient survey presented of, um, at the German Cystic Fibrosis Conference, 86% of Simeox users would recommend it to other patients. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic and the lack of results, we're not able to contribute any meaningful outcomes to a study that had been started also by our clinic, but maybe there will be a new opportunity soon. So how can I get the Simeox to use it at home? The prescription by the doctor after testing by the respiratory therapist then goes to the patient's health insurance company and is covered in most cases. Sometimes the health insurance companies require an extended explanation to benefit of use, but normally they agree. The cooperation with the providers who then deliver the device at home is very good. And now we go on with our case study. So I would like to introduce you to you, uh, Elena, who was born in 2003 
She is now 17 years old girl. She's very smart and self-determined patient who is very confident regarding her treatment and especially regarding new treatment options. Um, she has a long-lasting chronic airway infection since 2009 with chronic infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. She uh, needed regular uh, IV antibiotic treatments uh, between three and four times a year. And since 2014, we discovered Mycobacterium abscessus in the airways, um, which resulted in 2018 in a six months IV treatment with um, amikacin and meropenem. Uh, furthermore, she uh, needed a PEG tube to get high caloric uh, nutrition and a porticat catheter to, to get regular IV antibiotic treatments. Um, you can see in the next image um, the lung function course over time. Um, you see she has a very impaired lung function with respect to FEV1% predicted, which is always below 44% uh, predicted and uh, is in the, in the range of 34, 30, 38, and uh, in 2018, 32% predicted, which is indeed very low um, with respect to her age. Uh, we did a CT scan and you see the usual results of, uh, you see the usual findings um, with patient, in patients with advanced lung disease, you see uh, bronchiectasis, um, tree and butt uh, nodules, consolidations, and uh, some um, nodules which are highly um, suspect of being caused by mycobacterium uh, abscessus. So she has a very impaired lung function and a very uh, advanced lung disease in very young ages. So Elena has a CMOX at home and here she profits just in the pandemic with her therapy at home, included breathing techniques, parts, inhalation with 3% NACL, and using Simeox twice a day after inhalation. Usually she goes to the physio once a week. There she gets chest therapy and AD, but not during the pandemic. So she has a big profit with Simeox because she can determine her time of therapy herself. Here is Elena in a comfortable starting position so they can breathe in a relaxed way. Please do not be surprised that she is wearing a nose kit. This is not common for every patient, but it helps her to prevent leakage through the nose. And with Elena's example, I would like to illustrate the treatment with Simiox needs a good assessment and preparation so that patients then receive their best possible individual therapy re regime at home. It needs a few time to, to show them and to, to give them the hands, assist them, and then they can, can do it for them alone. Edna has found her own way to reach even deeper into small airways by pushing down from 100 to 25% during exhalation into the Simeox device. That is a special thing she found out for herself and it helps her to get to the deepest um, um, airway. There, you can see she, she pressed down to 25 and she uses program two with eight breathing cycles and varies the percentage power for herself. She has a very good body awareness and manages her drainage very self determined and effectively as you see here. So clinically, she stabilizes a little bit. Uh, so um, with respect of um, producing sputum, which was always a problem for her. So it was in the beginning, it was very difficult to find the mucobacterial abscesses in the airways. We have to do um, some bronchial alveolar lavages. But after studying the Simiox treatment, she succeeded in producing sputum to a higher degree. And you see um, even the start of IV treatment for mycobacterium abscessus did 
did not result in a profound uh, effect um, on lung function parameters like FEV1% predicted um, with a start of Simiox uh, in 2018. She, um, she improved lung function parameters to some degree um, and stabilizes her lung function on the 37% predicted. Uh, and you see the start of cafeteria treatment in 2020, then she, um, she experienced a, 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 a more advanced uh, improvement in lung function, um, about 10 to 15% predicted. But she still continues to, uh, um, to use Simiox under cafeteria treatment. So this is one case. Since Simiox, it's easier to cut my secretion and, and some other um, uh, patient testimonials I would um, give to you. And um, I think the takeaways would, wouldn't be just a, a coffee afterwards, but, but first the summary of our patient's testimonials. One more is it's quicker and I find it more relaxing, but it's so loud, I think it's, uh, it's for everyone not so easy to, to hear that sound. Um, um, a lot of patients um, say that it's too loud for them. But one possibility is to, to put some, some under the machine so it's at least a little bit um, more quiet. I think it's good that it's so hygienic, but there's so much waste, must there be. I think it's a very, um, very good discussion to, to change that perhaps for the, for the um, or physiotherapist. Despite cuff trio, still get secretions from the deep areas of my lungs. Great. I think that is something that Elena um, says. Um, we, we had a phone call yesterday, and she said that um, it's not, not just the mucus, which is more fluid. It's, um, it's really easier to, to get it out in a, in a really easy way. So, cuff trio. Mm. The next slide um, is a really impressive report from um, another clinic in, in Essen. It's another uh, university clinic in Germany. And um, there's a physiotherapist at the CF Center and he reported. Just a moment. Our patient has advanced CCX. She came there twice a week as an outpatient. She has been taking Trikafta since March 2020, from which she has benefited extremely. Since then, she has significantly less secretion and calf and rarely elimination secretion during therapy, and also at home during inhalation, which she continues to perform unchanged. After three cycles of Simiox, she has now repeatedly mobilized, mobilized an impressive amount of secretion, which we and she herself actually thought it was no longer there. You can see that she sweetens the experience and shows with gummy bears how much secretion she eliminates. First before taking Captrio, second with Captrio, and a third additional treatment with Simiox. I think with this we would end and um, thank you for your attention and we look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, um, uh, Dr. Grossenbrink and uh, Mrs. Uh, Christina Kramer for this uh, very, very interesting uh, uh, case report. Uh, I have a, a first question. Um, so uh, effectively, we have uh, more and more patient, CF patients uh, under CAF trio uh, today, uh, but it's it's still a great challenge for patients to 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 get this very expensive therapy. Um, we 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 could think that uh, with CAF, CAF trio uh, we don't need uh, any airway clearance therapy uh, any longer. Uh, in fact, uh, in your very interesting uh, uh, case report, you, you can see that uh, uh, despite that the patients are uh, efficient drugs, uh, they, need, they still uh, need uh, airway clearance therapy. 
uh, to remove uh, some mucus uh, from, from their lungs. How could you, uh, could you explain, uh, perhaps Dr. Grossenbrig, potential mechanisms or how CMEOX uh, uh, can have uh, some benefits on, uh, on, on, uh, on mucus uh, recurrence in this patients taking cafeteria therapy? So uh, cafeteria treatment um, uh, helps people with cystic fibrosis in every, uh, uh, in every uh, condition of lung disease. That means uh, if patients have a very uh, uh, limited lung disease, um, it, it helps people because the secretions get more fluid and the, 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 the sputum is normalized. And in, in patients with advanced lung disease, we, we can show a gross improvement on lung function and even in bronchiectasis and CT parameters. But um, even in especially in patients with advanced lung disease, we have um, not, not reversible lung changes, especially in the bronchial, bronchial trees. That means we have bronchiectasis, we have uh, mucus impaction, we have um, 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 chronic infection with pseudomonas aeruginosa, and these uh, changes in air wall um, stability well, uh, still occur or still um, are still present even under treatment with cafeterio. And um, the problem is that secretions are sticky, and that in in the in the lower airways airways you have um, 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 Bronco malachia, uh, which is not reversible by cafeteria treatment. And to get the secretions out of the very lower parts of the airways, um, still some physiotherapy is necessary. Uh, and in this case, um, Simiox can, can help and improve the airway, uh, um, the um, sputum expert, expectoration. All right, very interesting. So, even in new patients, we can have uh, some, uh, some situations where air recurrence is still necessary uh, despite uh, uh, optimal drug uh, therapy. Yeah. I, I, would, I would think it's especially for, pres, for patients with, bronch, with, with, with advanced bronchiectasis or with, where, where you can see bronchiectasis and where they have a, 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 a certain degree of lung disease, especially mm. in these patients. Uh, additional treatment with CBX is helpful, I think. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your answer. Um, Dr. Mitchell Scal, have you any uh, any experience uh, in patients uh, taking care of you uh, with uh, combined CBX therapy? Uh, we have only one patient uh, because unfortunately none of the ther therapies is uh, reversed in, in Poland. Um, one patient and he really improved. Uh, he, he used Simeo. Uh, we uh, observed a certain improvement um, uh, about 10% after, after uh, a few percent predicted after uh, he started Simeo. But then he um, started also Cactrio. And uh, this combination really um, gave 30% uh, improvement in FDUR. So uh, really this uh, patient benefited from those two therapies uh, significantly. Um, he also, his body weight improved. Uh, he's uh, started to, to be able to perform much more physical activity etc. So really this combination gives, um, we, we have only one patient, unfortunately, for now, um, but um, really taking in account this, um, this case really it gives um, spectacular effects, this combination. Okay, right, thank you. Um, if we are talking about compliance, because compliance of therapies uh, is, uh, is, is very often complicated uh, for, for, for patients, especially uh, for long-term uh, therapies uh, at home. Um, 
how uh, do you check uh, compliance uh, of, uh, of therapy and especially um, in your um, uh, Dr. Micheska and, 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 and Mrs. Janowska, you have a very precise optimal chest physiotherapy protocol at home. Uh, you presented uh, in, your, in your presentation. Uh, have you, uh, are you confident that uh, patients uh, uh, are following uh, your, your protocol, your chest physiotherapy protocol uh, at home? And uh, how could you check uh, if the patients uh, uh, are compliant with the with the, the protocol you uh, you uh, you have prepared for them, uh, we are not confident at all. However, we have um, now such experience that uh, we're able to see if uh, the patients uh, follow our um, indications. Uh, of course. Uh, I think there's no patient that does it always and always, always, every day, but there are patients who do 90% of our indications and there are patients that do 20% of our indications. And we are that experienced that we, we see it, uh, we doctors, we see it from the, the general condition as a sort of patients, pulmonary function tests and the physiotherapists um, they see that when they start working with with the patient if they do it correctly they know really how to do it um, yeah and um, I wanted to say something but I forgot maybe when I <laughs> when it comes back to me I will tell you <laughs> okay thank and you uh, and the German team, any comments of the compliance checking? Yeah, I think we just ask our patients if they are compliant, uh, how they are doing with treatment, if there are any problems. And we try to do this in a very, um, uh, we don't tell them like this. Uh, do you, have you, you have to do this and uh, do you have, do we have, uh, do you have done what we prescribed? Just ask them how, how, how they dealt with, with the machine, how it was working, if, it, if it's improvement. I, I, um, I was, um, I, I don't ask them, I don't ask the patients, did you perform as we prescribed? I ask them, how many times did you succeeded to do the treatment in a week? So, and then they, there's not so much pressure on the patients and they, uh, they don't, they, they, they can tell, oh, yes, I do, no, I do it tw twice a day. Or if they, if you ask for, uh, for uh, um, treatment courses in a week, then they say, oh, maybe one or two times a week. And then, you know, it's, it's not as much as, as, as prescribed. Yeah. And um, I think it's, it's the only way to do so. Yeah? So I think in Simiox, it's very interesting because patients who personally profit from the treatment actually perform it, uh, agree more to the treatment plan or uh, are going conformant with the treatment plan. And if they don't profit so much, they don't like it. They may possibly don't like it so much and then they do it a little bit rare. It's not with it's not with every treatment where you can see direct effects of a treatment. For for example, if you give nebulization for antibiotics, it's long-lasting treatment, and you don't see immediate effects. But with Simiox, it's different, and that's 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 very nice for the patients because they directly can see the treatment effect. Yeah, uh, that's true. That benefits uh, of therapy are very uh, correlated uh, to the compliance of the uh, of the, the use of the of the device of the number of pills <laughs> of drug taken in, in the day. Uh, so it's effectively it's a good point to say that the benefits uh, the, the, the short term benefits of the patients uh, conditions the uh, the compliance uh, for for long term. Uh, you, uh, Dr. Michelska, you, uh, you, you, you present a very nice uh, result on the lung clearance index after uh, two months of therapy with uh, uh, 
a full uh, recovering of, uh, of length function. Uh, do you have a, a long-term data, uh, especially on the long clearance index in, in patients uh, treated with CMEOX uh, several months? Uh, we, um, right now, um, the results of our study uh, using, uh, concerning using CMOX at home uh, are um, cal calculated, uh, as you know, <laughs> and uh, we are looking forward to, to those results. Um, so, but, but we think that a lung clearance index is a good parameter, especially in patients whose spirometry parameters are correct, are uh, about 100 or above 100. A lung clearance index can be the only way to, to, to uh, check lung function and to observe this uh, improvement in lung function. Um, so that's it, we, we are in, now, during observations, we, we started our observations and during observations, and of course, we will, we will um, publish the results of our, our study um, of this, using the CMOX at home. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's true that uh, LCI assessment, it's a very, very nice tool because it's very sensitive. Uh, uh, especially in patients with uh, uh, um, not very impaired uh, lung function. And uh, so it's, it can be effectively a, a good assessment uh, in, in these patients. And uh, um, I, I believe it's, uh, it's not too complicated in, in children to perform this, uh, this assessment. Do you have a, a high, high rate of, uh, uh, of success uh, to, to, to collect? Uh, this LCI assessment, yeah. Yes, it doesn't require the special maneuvers that this parametry requires. Uh, however, uh, it requires to sit uh, still and to breathe regularly, uh, which is uh, achievable in uh, children, uh, even in two, three, three year old children, but in five, six, seven year old, it's not a problem. Uh, maybe in in, um, in children that are hyperactive, it's a problem because they, they're not able to sit still for um, five or 10 minutes, but it's uh, another issue. In most of the children, it's uh, really um, feasible. Okay, thanks. Very little children, preschool children. And uh, for the German team, uh, have you any uh, experience on long-term uh, data on lung function values in patients treated uh, with CMOX several months? So actually, we don't uh, we don't use lung clearance index in patients with CMOX because we I think it's um, it's it's good if you're doing a control study to see. In fact, effects and so uh, it's, it's a time-consuming procedure, and so we don't uh, follow up every patient on on, on similar treatment with lung clearance. Mm. And on spirometry data, do you have long-term uh, long-term results? Yes, we in some pa we have uh, patients get a spirometry every three months, so we have results, but and um, we don't. Uh, have special uh, study protocols for patients with, uh, with Simiox. And um, so we don't have, we have, we, we have data for patients every three months, but not specially with uh, Simiox. <laughs> it's time to conclude. So uh, I would like to, uh, to, to warmly uh, thank everybody uh, for the, the, the amazing presentations and the great discussion we, we had together. Okay. Uh, I would like to briefly summarize uh, our, uh, our discussions. Uh, so CMOX, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good uh, alternative uh, to, uh, uh, to treat uh, patients at home, uh, especially uh, to, uh, to get uh, uh, very, uh, very efficient results, even at short term. But also, uh, 
it's a it's a good uh, it's a good uh, it's a good alternative to uh, uh, to uh, to treat patients uh, with uh, very few assistance. Uh, and uh, now, uh, due to the pandemic situation, um, uh, training uh, can be performed remotely, uh, and it's it's a, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, good thing for for the for the patients. Uh, to uh, to benefit from uh, from therapies uh, uh, without uh, uh, to, to, by reducing reducing uh, visits at at, at hospital. Uh, so CMOX can be used uh, even with uh, other com uh, other therapies, and uh, uh, it's, it's a great uh, it's a great insight to to uh, to know that even in patients treated with Captrio. Uh, air reference therapy and especially CMOX uh, have still an uh, 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 important uh, play uh, to, um, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the therapy uh, of patients and, uh, and CMOX uh, combined with Catrio uh, can uh, optimize the, the, the results and, uh, of, uh, uh, of, of drug uh, in lung function uh, improvement. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, it was uh, uh, our last session. I would like to to uh, to thank uh, every speakers and and uh, for the, the, the free uh, uh, European roundtable sessions. Uh, and we have now uh, a lot of information to uh, to treat uh, CF patients through uh, all the care management. So thank you very much. Uh, have a thank good you. day. And thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.